Hi everyone. So we're back for the next episode in Mixed Media Morsels. Um, before we get into that though, I want to uh, make a quick uh, statement about the Facebook group. I am so excited and so thrilled that everyone is having such a good time and the way you all are sharing your ideas and sharing your photos and your videos is just really great and it just really keeps the excitement and the momentum going so I want you to keep doing it. Uh, the other thing is um, there are some of my YouTube viewers who have, <clears throat> excuse me, who have uh, sent us a, an approval request for the Facebook group and you've not been approved yet and in those cases we've sent you a message but because we're not connected on Facebook, you're not seeing the messages. So uh, if you would please just go check your other messages or filtered messages and give us a quick reply uh, to the message that we sent so we can try to get you in the group. All right, and in any case that that happens, if you guys put in a request and you don't get approved, please go check your messages, okay? All right, so let's get to the next technique. Lots of fun here. And this time, uh, there won't be a whole lot of waiting for things to dry, although you will need to dry it maybe with your heat tool or your hair dryer. Um, but you can get it dried pretty quickly and, and we'll be able to see the results quickly. Okay, so I'm putting in some protection here just, you know, to protect the other pages a little bit. And um, what you're going to need for this technique is just simply some regular rubbing alcohol, okay? 70%, the kind you buy in the grocery store, no big deal, okay? Um, I've already poured a little bit into a, a little palette here so that I can use it. And it only takes a tiny bit. You pour some out, I mean literally like not even a cap full, okay, <laughs> is what you're going to use for this small page. If you have a bigger page, you might need a little more, but all right. So what we're going to do is um, I want you to take two lighter colors of paint. I'm going to use this purple and I think this spa blue like this, okay. I'm going to use these two lighter sort of sort of pastel colors, lighter, brighter. You can use bright ones too, doesn't matter. And, um, but you do want them to be on the lighter side because we're gonna do another coat later that's a darker, deeper color. So you're gonna start with those. This page does not need any gesso prep or anything like that. Your paint, this, these two colors of paint, whatever colors you choose, are going to be your prep, your base, okay? So you just need a little bit to um, to cover your page, okay? Doesn't matter what it looks like. It can be messy, yucky. I mean, you don't want brown mud, probably. You want them to retain their bright, pretty colors. But um, it doesn't matter how they look mixed on the page, swirled on the page is what I'm getting at. Okay, I'm gonna put a little of this one. It's a little bit light. I might add a little bit of another color to that because that one is light. I think I'm going to add a little bit of this one mixed in with it just to because I want to brighten that color up a little bit. There we go. Okay. And if you are concerned about it, you might want to protect the, the other page next to it. I'm going to lay this other deli paper here and just clip it down to keep it protected. Although it can be wiped off probably because of the, uh, the coat of uh, Mod Podge that we put on. That clip is not very tight. There we go. That one is. And let's see. This one is too, I think. Okay. I'm going to fold these in so they'll lay down. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna take your brush and just paint the page, basically. Just cover it with the paint. To dry my brush off here. Okay.
down here where it's more green. I'm going to add a little bit more of the purple just to spread that around. A little bit more. Oops, I got a little dry bit. Okay, so I'm not really, like I said, not really giving any care and concern to how this looks because it's, go it's going to be covered up. But you're going to see bits of these colors peeking through what we do in this technique. Okay, good. And let me just wipe this off on my index card. Clean that up. <clears throat> Okay. All right, so we're going to dry this. Now the next the next layer of paint is going to be a watery paint. You really want to water it down and it's going to be a darker, deeper, richer color. So I'm going to choose this dark purple to go with mine. And you can do, like I said, any color combos you want, but <clears throat> you just wanna make sure this one is gonna be really wet, okay? So I'm going to also take a, pe a piece of paper towel to um, protect this other page. I don't want it to run either all over the, uh, the page here next to it. So I'm just folding up a little piece of towel here and I'm going to go ahead and clip that in as well. Whoops. Just right, right near the seam, right near the edge of the page there. Just if any water or liquid runs down, it'll be caught by the uh, paper toweling there, okay? It's absorbed into the towel. <clears throat> So, you want to go ahead and have, before you start this part, you want to go ahead and have your alcohol, you know, ready, and you want a brush, just a small brush, okay, to, um, to use the alcohol, <clears throat> to do the alcohol portion. Let me get my uh, brush rinsed off over here. I'm going to put a little of the paint out. Whoa, it's coming out quick. It doesn't take a lot for these little tiny pages we're working on. It doesn't take a lot of anything for these little tiny pages. But you just go accordingly, you know, to what size your page is. And I know I'm, I'm doing a lot of backgrounds right now, but all of the techniques that I'm going to work, work on in this little book are not all gonna be back, backgrounds, but I did wanna start out with a few so we'd have a few techniques under our belt, so to speak, so that when we get ready to go into other things, we already know how to make a background and we can make a background and work on something else along with that background. So that's my thinking in this process. Okay. I think I'm going to, and I think it would be a good idea for you to, to clip the page down because it will curl a little when you put the wet paint on because it's not going to be just paint. It's going to be <clears throat> watery paint. Let's see if I've got another clip. Okay. I'm going to clip both corners, just a very tiny bit on the corner. Okay. All right. And what's going to happen here, whoops, is the clip is going to pop off. <laughs> Let's see if I have another one. I don't 
have, let's see, I don't have another one of this type handy. Let me see, maybe I can use this up here. There we go. Okay, there. All right, so what we're gonna do is take that paint that you put out and you're gonna add some water. Okay. You want it to be good and watery. If it seems thick at all, wet it again. This is gonna be really watery. And have your brush and your alcohol ready because this step has to be done while the watery paint is wet or it won't work. If your paint starts to dry, you'll see that it's not working when you start the alcohol part. So make sure that you get your paint good and watery. Brush it on. Quickly. I almost didn't get enough here. All right. It's nice and wet. Dip the handle of your brush in the alcohol and touch it to your page in a couple of spots. You see that magic happening? <laughs> it's so cool. All right, and then you can wet your brush and tap it on and make Not tap it, but shake it, I mean. Yeah, shake it on. And get some more. But see, it's only working on the spots that are still wet. So I probably should have put a little bit more of the, uh, the wet paint on. But you get the idea. And it looks really, really cool. I'm going to try just for grins to see if I can add a little more paint near the bottom here and do that again. <clears throat> See what happens. There we go. So cool the way it works. Whoops, hit the book. Okay, so you get the idea of how that's gonna how that's gonna work. And if you get enough, make sure you get enough watery, watery paint on there to start with. We're gonna dry it now. Okay, so that's what it looks like. All dry. And you can leave it that way if you want, or you can continue on and you can put another coat of another paint on and do it again. And I'm gonna do that just because I wanna see what it looks like. I've never done the extra coat. I've done this much before, but I've not done the extra coat. So now to decide what color. Maybe I'll stick with that darker uh, aqua and see how that turns out. Put some, ooh, that was a lot. Oh well. You know me, I'll use it for something. All right. Rinse off my brush. And I'm going to use that index card that I was cleaning my brush on a while ago to take up this purple paint that's here. Ooh, it made like a Almost like a, it did make a dendritic print. Look at that. See the branching? <laughs> Who knew? Guess if it's wet enough, it'll do that, huh? Very cool. Very neat. I like that. Pretty. Okay, 
So I'm going to move that out of the way so we don't get any purple in our mix here. Okay. Water. And the brush. Okay. Let's see what this does. See, that's a little thick. I can see that that's still thick, so I'm going to add just a bit more water. You'll have to just play with it some to get the feel for it, but it eventually it feels more watery. Okay, let's do this one. You really want it drippy on your page, okay? And let your page cool down after you dry it because it will dry this paint quicker if you don't. Okay, here we go. I need a little more alcohol about out here. Make sure you have enough alcohol out so you don't have to risk your paint getting dry on you. There we go. It might be that it's too dark underneath for this to show up very well. But it's fun experimenting just to see, you know. Yep, that didn't do as much. It's done some, but not as much. You don't see it, you know, as much as you did the, uh, as we did on the first layer. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm, I'm feeling sure that that's what it is. The uh, background is dark, so it's not popping up as brightly as what I, oops, that's hot. Those clips get hot, be careful. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's what's happened is it's just too dark underneath. So, now we're getting glued here to the deli paper. Okay, we're good. And these layers of paint are so thin because they're watery, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep trying on this page and see what happens. We may go to a new page and try it again, but I wanna try it again and just put a lighter, uh, a brighter color there. So let's go for, let's go for white. Let's put a little of that on. A little bit of white and maybe some, I don't know, yellow. Those are bright. Let's see. Now see that? <laughs> see, this happens to everyone. <laughs> okay. All right. And I want to use this uh, want to use this paint up here. So really good background starters for your iCads. Or you can put it in your composition book that you save your unwasted paint in. Isn't that neat? Yep, really cool. Okay. We'll let those dry. And...
We're going to just cover this with the, now this is not watered down paint. This is just your, I'm going to go back and like start from scratch and put a little bit of um, regular paint. Okay. I'm going to start by doing the, the base mostly white and then I'm going to add the yellow in with it. So we won't have a dark background anymore. We'll have a light one. Okay. Right. So this time I'm I'm going to use I think a green maybe on top. Um, this was a nice dark green. Okay, add some water, get some more alcohol out. <laughs> okay, let's see what this one looks like. Remember, you want to pile on the wet paint so it stays nice and wet while you put the uh, alcohol on. All right, we go again. Yes, it works much better with the light color background. So cool. And it makes a really nice background. Okay. That looks better, huh? I'm going to go ahead and take off these clips so that I can add a little of that paint to the corners here. <coughs> Oops, I think that might have uh, taken a little bit of the paper too, but that's okay. I think I'm gonna loosen this from the <clears throat> from the deli paper too because it uh, it likes to stick to that occasionally. So while it's wet, it's the best time to peel it up. Okay. I'm going to put another little piece of something here just to protect that page underneath. Okay, so I'm going to take this off so you can see the, the full effect without the mess. Got a little bit of green paint here, but that's okay. And I am losing another page. <laughs> I'm going to have to go ahead and take these out, I think. 
I think that's what I'll do. Just take the pages out and work on them individually. Because see what's happening? It's seeping also uh, through to the other, the edges of the other pages. These are sticking because of the Mod Podge getting hot again and the paint getting hot again. So yeah, these are fun techniques, but I guess we need to protect them a little bit better. So, so now they're all out. <laughs> Okay, but I'm gonna, like I said, more than likely just put a punch holes and put a binder ring in there, hold them together. So here's the uh, here's the new page. We just move those. Okay, and that's the kind of effect you're gonna get with the alcohol. Isn't that neat? All right now I'm gonna show you another one. Let me use up this paint here too while I'm thinking about it. Um, I had a blue out earlier that I picked up, so I'm going to use this card to pick up some of the green. Just keep adding on layers, using up the paint. Okay. It's mostly dry now anyway that stuff is and I'll take this over here and put it on here So I wanted to show you, I had worked on one earlier because it's been so long since I've done this technique. I wanted to uh, do, do a little test run. So I used a piece of um, uh, mixed media paper, just a small piece. And uh, I did this, this one and it turned out really good. And I wanted to show you other colors that will work too and show you what it looked like. And I wanted to also say that this is going to look so much better when you put a coat of Mod Podge on it, like I did on this one. So here it is, okay. So this one has uh, a light green and a light blue on the bottom, the base coat, and then I used a dark blue on the top. Okay, and that's what happened on it. Aren't they beautiful? And just so unique. And of course, I was looking at it and already finding pictures of things in there. <laughs> that pareidolia. And I can see a swan right here in the corner. Can you see that? I know it's hard to see it on camera as well, but there's looks like a little swan right here. And I've seen all kind of things in there, turtles and fish and because <laughs> all of these little dots look like eyes to me so I'm seeing all these little animals <clears throat> but that's what you can see the difference in the um, in the sheen on it and how it looks with the um... <clears throat> well if I could hold on to things it'd be a whole lot better today <laughs> where this is more of a matte uh, finish see this one has the a little bit of shine that Mod Podge puts on it. And um, it just gives it to me a nicer, more finished look. So I'll definitely be putting a coat of Mod Podge on that one. And that seals it all in too, but it just has a better look and, and all to me. It just makes it richer looking somehow. I guess because it takes away the chalky look that sometimes you have with um, acrylic paint. So anyway, that's today's technique. And I'll be back again soon, hopefully in the next few days, uh, with another one for you. And we'll just keep going. So I hope you guys enjoy, or keep enjoying, um, working on these techniques. I know I'm having a blast. And um, we'll see you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.